after reading this chapter of Mashoko Tensai manga 84, I believe for Fusion create Nana Hoshi to resemble the old school isekai. You know the old school isekais, and I mean before Familiar Zero, even before Dot Hack. I mean stuff like Fafuji Yugi, Visions of Escaflone, and many more, where it was most of the times the main character of the protagonist that is isekai was a female. And the reason why it was a female is, remember, most isekais were inspired by the creation of Alice in Wonderland, where the main character went to that world, and they came back. You know, they, they had a problem, they had a situation they couldn't stand or deal with, life wasn't going well for them in their own world, things were tough and hard, then they get isekai into this other world where they face bigger threats, go on big adventures, and and they have this despite how things felt refreshing, they felt homesick, they really wanted to go home. They had regrets of leaving home. And stuff, and they wanted to go home no matter what, no matter how many friends they made on the way, no matter what lover they fell in love with, they've always wanted to go home. And they did, and when they did, they learned the lesson and they become a better person at the end of the story. That was the purpose of the first and original isekais back in the day, you know, like I said, Alice in Wonderland. Nana Hoshi definitely resembles the original. Easy kind of protagonist, you know, a female goes to the world. And remember, when we first saw her in the story, she was having an argument with someone. And she was about to get hit by a car, but Rhea saved her, but she got teleported there anyways. And now she's here. And she wants to go back. Not to mention, she doesn't have any powers. Just like most of the original Easy kind of protagonists, you know. Like that, but they're surrounded by a lot of talented people. Which, when you think about it, if you, like I said, Mushoku Tensai is all about perspective, Nana Hoshi could have been the main character too, as well, besides Rudius. She could have been the main character. If Refugion wanted to write the story that way, she could have. He could have. Think about it. Um, he just he did other spin offs, you know, where Roxy's the main character, where Eris is the main character. Anyone in Mushoku Tensai could have been the main character besides Rudius. It's just that Rius was the one that he wanted to focus on the most. But as besides that, she's having a, a major, major mental breakdown. Because, you know, Rius has a sting where no matter how many times you fail, you've always got to get better. Failure is, pro is in the process of success. You know, Rius knows this. He knows this well because all he's ever done in life was fail. He never really tried at anything. He has always stayed in his room since he was 34 years old. So this new world was a new chance for him. And because of that, he became a different person. Nana Hoshi, on the other hand, is different. She wasn't reborn into this world. In fact, it's almost as if the world itself is rejecting her. She wants nothing to do with this world, even though she tries to put some taste of home in this world. When it comes to food, when it comes to the uniforms, when it comes to the way the school system that we're using them to go to is changed because of her. You know, she left that impact on this world. But she's that homesick. And you can see the pictures, the images, see all the magical circles, all the blueprints that she tried to create, find some way to go back home. But no matter what she did, it didn't work. You know, so she's trying and trying and she's just completely out of it, you know obsessed, upset, you know, and there's more to it in dialogue when it came to the books, you know, wondering how her brother is, how her friends are, her, I believe, former lover, or was lover, I can't remember that much about it, and she's just, just completely just throwing stuff all over the place, just um, obsessed, you know, while everyone else there in the series at that school is enjoying their school life by doing their own research and experiments and they're enjoying it and stuff. Not a whole she's not enjoying it. She's not doing her research out of love or fun. She's doing it out of desperation. As if she has a time limit. As if she is not meant to stay there. So she doesn't want to be there at all. She misses her home. She misses her place. 
her life wasn't that bad as she thought it was. But because of that, she wants to badly go back home. And when I saw this, when I read this, I'm like, you know, this reminds me of the old school isekais when I first read this in the web novels. And reading it again reminded me of that again. It reminded me of how I kind of wish Japan and the authors there would try to do one, you know? Someone out there trying to make another old school isekai, you know, one where it's about main character getting overpowered or them getting a harem, but instead them going over there, learning a lesson, going on a big adventure, and coming back as a better person. You know, heck, we don't do that anymore, barely. You hear in America. It's like that's a dying kind of storytelling that I kind of miss watching as a kid. Heck, even reading as a kid. There's all kinds of stories. I mean, sometimes the main character didn't have to be a female. Heck, even Martin Lawrence was in it in The Black Knight. <laughs> you know, shout out if you remember that movie. So, not a whole, she's just not feeling well. She is just completely out of it, man. She is drained. She is sunk. You just, and the way they captured it within the manga, you know, sometimes people are impressed with the anime and the art style from the light novels, which is well deserved. But that not everyone really praises much of the mouth art style, and sometimes it's not all that. But when it is, it can be. Showing the illustrator can do a very good job capturing moments within the story if they truly put their heart into it. And seeing Nanahoshi, uh, even without seeing her face, but just sometimes the mask on. You can see her expressions even through the mask. That's how much despair this girl is going through. So, the illustrator did a very good job at doing that, by the way. Good job, good job. The only thing else that happened is Rudy is wondering why he cannot use healing magic, more or less as in he can't use chantless healing magic for some reason. So, he can do it. He believes probably because his power is used to doing only battle-ready spells, which healing itself is not really a battle-ready spell. Where Selfie, on the other hand, is kind of different. She went a different way of doing chantless healing and water and stuff like that. Mostly to protect. Well, Rudy just mostly did his for convenience or to attack. Because he wanted to do cool powers and stuff as he was a little kid. So I guess when you learn magic at a very young age, you will, if you not just study your magic a certain way at a young age, but also if you use it a different kind of way, that's the way you'll stick with at a very young age. So if you train your um, kid, which Rudy was thinking, if he they had a kid with selfie, well, that said kid will also be able to use chantless incantations and will learn to decide how to use their magic, whether for defense or for attack or even for support, which is no way kind of defense, but some people say it's not. Yeah. So anyways, um, Interesting chapter. I can't wait to see how they execute the next one. It's going to be very interesting. Can't wait for that. Uh, and that's it. Yeah, that's a good chapter. Not bad. Very short. A lot of these most short times they chapter is like feeling short, even though they're monthly, which sucks. But anyways, I got this video. I hope you guys enjoyed If you did, like, comment, subscribe, of course. Hit that bell icon. This has been the background on Anime. Signing out.